Hi everyone, this is Meg at Chasing Retro. This is the second or third, might be just my second, video in my Ready, Set, Stash collaboration. Uh, this is going to happen all through the month of September, but I'm thinking about extending it into October as well. And if I decide to do that, I will add more prompts. I'll change this and publish this again for your use. But uh, the last video that I made, I made, this is the third, because I made fabric tags and then I made shape journaling cards. Today I'm going to make some Franken paper. And this is only out of necessity for this uh, particular moment because I'm working on my peaches and cream journals and I have a ton of paper strips staring at me in front of me and I need to go ahead and make them into Franken paper. So I've been watching some of your other videos that you guys have uh, made as part of the collaboration and so many of you have done Franken paper and I must say that I've been inspired by other people sort of making a quilted, sort of a quilted look instead of just the strips, which is what I normally gravitate to. So it's kind of been fun to sort of make myself think outside of the box. And maybe with some of my other offcuts, I don't have any yet, but with these journals, I will have some other offcuts of wider, maybe square, more squared or even triangle shaped pieces. I might try to use those in making some more Franken paper. They don't always have to be long strips. That's just what I uh, sort of started doing because when I cut journals, cut paper for journals, I end up with a lot. I end up with some pieces like this, you know, this would be great for pockets, but I end up more so with things like this because a lot of times the, the pages that I need need to be 10 inches wide. And of course, printer paper is 11. So that's an, a perfect inch cut off. And you don't really know what to do with those pieces, but you can make Franken paper. Now, if you have a sheet or a strip this size, I've shown this before. I really like to fold these in a haphazard way like this. I mean, not really doing it really well here. Just so you can kind of fold back and forth like sideways crooked accordion style, so to speak. Uh, especially if there's something on the back, you can let that side show as well. And then I like to run a straight stitch down it and that's just a fun page embellishment. So we're not gonna use these for the Franken paper just because I like to sew between my strips. And if you do that, it will cover up almost all the strip if I use a zigzag stitch. So I'm not gonna do those the thinner pieces for Franken paper, I will use one inch and above. So here we have lots of beautiful shades of peach and coral. Lots of pretty papers. These are some handmade papers from India that uh, I received in Happy Mail. This one is a little, it, it was not a square piece of paper, so I'll probably save this for a collage in some other way. And these are handmade papers and I love them, but because they're not even in square, I'm going to save those for collaging, maybe collaging tags or something. This would make a perfect side pocket or even a bookmark, so I'll save that. And I'm just gonna end up keeping my one or one and a half inch strips for this purpose here. Aren't these colors just so cheerful? I mean, <laughs> other than yellow, I feel like peach and coral are some of the most cheerful colors on the color wheel. This is, you know how sometimes paper pads will have a little corresponding pattern on the top where the hole is where it would be hung up in a store? I save those too, and I make those into the little embellishments also. That might be all of my really thin strips left. Nope, here's two more, three more. Okay, let's make some Franken paper. Now, a lot of these are printed on both sides, not all of them. So as you, as you see, when I go along, I'm gonna sort of flip them back and forth to see which side I like better. 
Now, a lot of people do this in different ways. Um, a lot of people like to put glue on each strip and put it down. Because I don't know where the off cut is going to go, you know, so I'm gonna have some extra here that I'll trim. I don't like putting glue on the strip because then I end up with sticky sides that I'm not using yet. So my favorite thing to do is to put glue down on the paper. I am almost out of glue stick. I'm gonna have to get another one out. So these are not cheap anymore. I don't know if you guys have noticed that the price of glue has gone up. I feel like the inflation for glue is 75% as opposed to what everything else is. Um, yeah, this one, when it won't stay in the container, you know that you're down to just a few seconds left of glue. Um, but yeah, I thought I was out, almost out, so I ordered more. And then I found out that I had already ordered a pack, maybe two packs. I found, I just found like two eight packs of this in my closet and I was like, oh no. And it was already too late to cancel the order. Inventory management is something that I haven't had to think about since I worked in retail and I may need to start thinking about it again now that I'm storing so many junk journal supplies that are not cheap. <laughs> Thankfully, if you don't open them, these last a long time. All right, we're gonna start with, I don't like this. This doesn't look like much because you can't see that it's a piece of wood. So I'm gonna start with this one. And I don't always go all the way across. I'll start with partial. I'm wearing a baseball cap today. So if I hit the camera, I'm very sorry. I might knock it a few times. It's one of those, um, human days where I look in the mirror and say, uh, no, yeah, we're wearing a hat today. Okay, so that's that. And it's gonna look kind of funny, it has arms, but we're gonna go back and trim all that. Okay, let's put this one here. I love doing this. This is like very therapeutic for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's like a puzzle. Okay, so I'm trying to find one that's the exact width of that one, and I think that might be hard because for some reason I remember this one, I cut it twice for some reason, and I, that may be the only size, the only width of that one that I have in my pile, which means I'll just pick it up real quick and slide it all the way over. That might be what I have to do. Yeah, I don't have any more to this thin, so let's do that. Oops, still didn't make it to the edge. There we go. All right, I would like some really dark coral now. Sorry, I hit the camera again. I saw it hit. I may have to turn my cap around. Okay. Is this the same? Yep. But I kind of like this side better. So... The more color, the better. <laughs> if I have a choice between white background and a colored background, I'm always going to choose the colored. All right, let's use one of these Indian papers now, and I'm gonna use the whole thing. You know what, I need more glue. I have run to the end of my glue line. I almost always, or I should say always, use a zigzag stitch when I make Franken paper, but I really should investigate some other stitches because there's this one stitch that I think would be really good on Franken paper that I never tried. It looks like a herringbone or like, I call it chicken feet. It's like <laughs> sort of a crisscross pattern. Um, I really should try that because I think that would be cool. It does use more thread and <laughs> thread is also one of those commodities that is not cheap anymore. So it really depends on when I do that, it depends on um, you know, how much thread I have left of that color. Do I wanna spend more 
thread making it a stitch that's a little bit more decorative decorative or not tiny little gray dots on that side but I like this one so and this one's just a, a hair more narrow than that one that's funny but we can still make it we can make it right by putting the next one overlapping this one slightly to make sure we keep our straight line going down All right, we have some. Ooh, that's pretty. But let's do that because we don't really have any blue on here at all. Oh yeah, I said I was gonna move this up a little bit, didn't I? Just a tad. And then we've already used that one, so let's flip it this time and put that side. These are so pretty. I mean, I've got all these pages in my journals, but I don't get to see them all next to each other like this. It's the beauty of Franken paper. I'm getting close to the end, the end of the glue line. I hope you guys have had an enjoyable weekend. It has been one for us, definitely. It's just hot. We're having a resurgence of summer right now. And um, I bought a few cute sweaters and I really would like to wear them. I'm not, I'm not asking for cold weather by any means. I don't like cold weather, but a little nip in the air would be nice so I can at least wear my sweaters in the mornings. <laughs> I love sweaters. I think today is actually the first official day of fall, so that's cool. What is y'all's favorite part about fall? Are y'all um, pumpkin spice lovers or uh, scarf lovers? I remember scarves and boots was like the thing and I don't think it is anymore. Um, I like the way, I think I mentioned this in my last year's video when I was talking about fall. One of my favorite things about fall is hearing the leaves crunch under my feet when I walk on the sidewalk. I just, I remember always loving that sound as a kid and I kind of still do. And I used to play in the leaves. My grandpa would rake lot piles for me and let me jump in and there's this certain smell that leaf piles have and it's just so cool i can't really put my finger on it like what is, what is the smell coming from i don't know it's just fall we have roses this is a little more pink but i really wanted to use this so i did and then i have this one which is a little more peachy Let's do that. And I'm going to have a little bit of white space left over, but that's fine. I need one more. Something maybe dark this time. Okay. All right. Make sure everything is adhered. And then we're going to flip it and trim. For some reason, when fall hits, I only want to listen to jazz. <laughs> I don't know why. And we we use Spotify, and there are a lot of vintage-inspired jazz stations or playlists that people make for fall, and I have really been enjoying those. A lot of the crooners back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s sang about fall. So... It's not hard to find songs about fall that fit that bill. And I, one of the things I love 
to do most is make playlists. It's kind of like, I consider that one of my hobbies. And so I feel like at this point, I've been listening to everybody else's. So now I need to make my own and contribute to the playlist community because I've got all these songs in my head now that are about fall, that are jazzy. And I need to make a playlist. If someone were to look at my Spotify playlist that I make, and also that I subscribe to, but um, I try to make more than I subscribe to, um, just because I really like customizing my own music. There's certain songs that I just don't like. I don't know. It could be the lyrics. It, most like most of the time, it's the sound, or there's something like in it that just bothers me or drives me bananas like a certain instrument or something um but I will make a playlist and then listen to it for a while and then I'll get tired of it um but then I'll find that like other people have found it and shared or liked it you know um but it's, my playlists, like I said, are very, 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 um, I don't know what, what the word would be, eclectic, I guess. I mean, I like so many different types of music. I mean, so many different types of music that if someone were to stumble onto my channel, they would wonder, maybe a family is collaborating together and... Everyone in the family has a different music taste. Nope, that's just me. That's all me. And it really is every morning I wake up and I'm like, what am I in the mood for today? In the fall, like I said, it's usually jazz. I like having jazz on while I'm working. It's relaxing to me. Um, another type of music that I like I may lose some followers on this one because it's a little bit, it's a little bit fringe and I didn't even know it was a thing until about six months ago. I like something called Mall Soft and I feel like the more music evolves, the more people start making up new types of music, new genres, and then they name, they name all of the genres, and there's probably a billion different genre, genres right now, and there's no way I would ever know what they all are, but someone named this one, it's called Mawsoft, and okay, how to describe it? It's often described as liminal, like liminal music for liminal spaces. And I was like, okay, what is a liminal space? I didn't even know what that meant. So I started researching that. And a liminal space is a space, a public space, but a lesser populated part of a public space that you're not supposed to stay in. It's like a pass through. So imagine you're at I don't know, any public establishment, like a store or a bowling alley or whatever, and you go in this little hallway to use a payphone. This is back in the day, y'all. I know there's not really payphones anymore. You are in a liminal space. And so while you're in this liminal space, there's little to look at. It's kind of bland, kind of beige. Um, and you can hear, you can hear things happening where you just were, like on the skating rink. Um, but you can't really see it. And because you're so far away from it, it sort of sounds echoey or distorted in a way. Um, it's like the Doppler effect when it, like a policeman passes you and it sounds like the siren changes tone. It's not, it's just how it sounds as it goes past you. Same thing, a uh, liminal space sort of has a sound distortion quality to it. And some people, because malls were a thing of the past and they're kind of, well, in most parts of the country, they're kind of 
lacking luster and actually a lot of them are closing. People who are nostalgic for the mall culture of yesteryear have started making playlists of music that you would have heard played in the loudspeakers in a mall. Uh, more so in the liminal spaces. So imagine you go down a hallway to go to the restroom or use a payphone, and you would he you would still hear the music, but it would be quieter and um, maybe harder to decipher what song it is or what the lyrics are or whatever. But people have started taking music like. Lionel Richie and, and artists like that from the 70s and 80s and they have been making playlists or sorry putting them in a music editing software and slowing them down and adding echo and um I'm trying to, th I'm not really good at music terminology, but I guess more just adding, not really grunge, but like a, almost like an underwater quality. You know how if you're listening to water, listening to, <laughs> listening to music at the pool and you go underwater, how you can still kind of hear it. It's that. And I can't, I'm really doing a terrible job of describing this. If you were to go to YouTube and search Mallsoft. You just listen for five minutes and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, my husband thinks it's weird. <laughs> he said, this music makes me feel weird or sad or whatever because he says it's like, reminds him of malls. You know, we both grew up going to the mall. Our parents would drop us off with a dime for the payphone and come back four hours later and get us. So we're kind of... We're kind of bumming about the whole mall culture being a thing of yesteryear, but to me, it's like oddly comforting to listen to that music because it's almost like I am time traveling a little bit. I'm telling y'all, it's it's weird. I know I'm a little bit weird in that respect, but um, now I can't listen to it all the time. It does get to me after a while, and I have to just turn it off. But sometimes it's... Um, the best thing to listen to in the background when you're working. So a lot of people, I guess, I've heard some people also call it modern elevator music. And um, so yeah, if you, you know how some people like to listen to just things in the background that don't really uh, interfere with your ability to focus. So that that's kind of what it is for me. Um, but again, like I said, I can't listen to it all day or it starts, it does start to make me feel a little glum. So yeah, seriously, check it out. Um, a lot of times you will hear it like, um, in waiting rooms. Well, I guess in the eighties and nineties you would have, like if you're in an office building that's real big and has open airy, uh, high ceilings and glass everywhere, it sort of has that echo quality. Yeah, that's what Mall Soft is. All right, you guys, that was a tangent. Um, these are glued down. I'm going to let them dry just a little bit, and then I'm going to sew them, and then I'll come back and show you the finished effect. I think I'm going to use peach thread. I have a very light peach thread. That way, it will still be light enough that if, you, if I were to make a tag or a journaling card, you could still write in between. It wouldn't be so stark as black against white. Like sometimes I do like to use black thread for these. Um, but normally when I do that, I try to limit the use of them to pockets because I don't want you to see the back. But I think the peach on these will be okay. I'll be back in a second. Okay, I'm back. And the paper has been sewn. Now I have all these lovely strings hanging off of it to trim off. Let me do that really quickly. While I'm doing that, I will continue to talk about the collaboration. Uh, Ready, Set, Stash is open to everyone. And if you'd like to participate, just use that hashtag in your uh, Instagram post or YouTube channel. You don't have to have Instagram or YouTube to participate. You can craft along and join along at, on your own without social media. 
um, craft with us if you'd like. Some of us are doing craft with me, others are just doing sort of show and tell type videos. Either one is t completely fine. Uh, so I've started a playlist and there are several videos in it already if you'd like to check that out. It's it's uh, on my main YouTube page under playlists and there have been so many creative um, videos posted in this collab so far. Wishes and Weeds has made some awesome wallpaper tags. I watched that one this morning and she used some wallpaper that she found from a sample book from 1940 and they turned out so cool. Um, Pop Vintage and Home, that's Meredith. She has been making a ton of things to build up her stash and having, um, I hope she's having fun with it. She seems to be. Um, Thrifty Journal Shop, who is Amber. She has been um, creating some um, master boards and things like that, which her master boards are awesome. You need to go look at them. They're really cool. She's very artistic and creative. Um, let's see who else. Um, Tracing Dreams has made, she made some beautiful fabric tags to start off with and she used real feed sack. So I you know it was like, wow. Cause I, I think if I had real feed sack, I would never want to use it. So that's real bravery, but <laughs> they turned out so beautifully. And um, yeah, she, she added buttons and stuff like that to hers, which I've never thought about doing to my fabric tags. And I do have a lot of buttons. So that inspired me to try that. Uh, who else? Let's see. Carrie the Paper Monkey. She made some fabric tags as well. Uh, I want to say hers were fall themed. I could be getting it confused with something else that I watched. Uh, a lot of people are making fall journals right now, but you know, fall colors can be used for lots of other journals. You don't have to, if you're building up your stash with some fall colored fabrics, you can use it for woodland journals or lots of other things. Um, this is the tedious part. This is unfortunately something that you can't do really well at the sewing machine because the thread cutter will not allow you, you can't get your paper close enough to the thread cutter to get these trimmed as they should be. <laughs> and just when I think I'm done, I see more, but I think that's it. Okay. Um, Linda's Paperworks, she made a um, collage, it was very much like Franken paper, like a collage journal tag. And let's see, is that it? No, no, no. Kelly Harrison, I'm looking now so I will not miss anyone. Kelly Harrison made some beautiful um, fabric tags and she has some hankies in her stash so she was utilizing that too. And also Hazel Anaka Designs. If you guys don't know Hazel, please check her out. She has posted lots of really just really good fundamental foundational YouTube videos this year, this summer I should say, and I have learned so much from her. So head over to her channel too to see what she created for this. She made fabric tags as well. I think that was everybody's favorite, or maybe it was because it was first on the list. I feel like all, all of us delved into our fabric tags first. Honestly, that's what I was most excited about making. Um, so for future, let me see if I missed anybody real quick. Um, all my magical things. I just started following her. She's super cool. She's a new YouTuber, so please uh, head over to her channel. All of these channels will be in my collaboration playlist. So please go watch their videos and comment and subscribe if you can. But anyway, what I was saying, these, if I were to continue making these, and I probably will because as soon as I'm done with these peach journals, I'm going to piggyback right on, on top of that. And with a similar color palette, I'm going to be making 
Mary Poppins journals and I need a lot of pink and blue for those. So um, I'm gonna have some peachy pink off cuts that I know I'll be able to use for those as well. So I might need to go ahead and open up my uh, box of strips. So I keep a separate shoe sized Rubbermaid tote for paper strips like these, the one inch or bigger. And it's exclusively for making Franken paper. If I don't want to or don't have time to immediately make some to go with the project like I am this one, I throw them in that box and there are just all different colors and patterns that I can choose from. And it's just a fun afternoon to sort of piece those together and then um, I usually use a generic white thread to sew those if it's not a specific theme in mind. Okay, we are done with our cutting. So now what we will do is we'll decide if these are going to be tags or pockets. Uh, probably will not cut them on camera because I'm not quite ready to decide what width my pockets are. And I like to wait until I have a better idea of what the the finished journal size will be. And I have the journal's covers made, but um, I'm in the process of um, measuring and cutting papers. So you can't really, after you cut out and sew around a pocket, you can't really go back and say, I wish I had made it a half an inch um, wider, because you can't. So I will be waiting on that. But whenever I cut pockets, I usually use an index card as a template and I'll cut around it and then I always go back with a straight stitch and I seal down because um, these are going to, I didn't do the back stitch on any of these ends. So these will eventually try to unravel themselves, especially if you're using them as journaling cards or tags. So I always go around, be it a pocket, a tag or whatever, and I do a straight stitch all the way around to secure everything. But I think they're so pretty. Tell me what you guys think. Are you peach fans? or coral fans <laughs> so that was fun thank you for letting me do this with you today and if you would like to download this i have it both on my community page on youtube as well as in my Kofi shop for a free download um, or you know you can print it or you can just use it as a graphic um, in your videos or Instagram post, but this is fun. I gotta pick what I'm gonna make next. Maybe shaker cards, cause I actually pulled my glitters out yesterday to see what I had. That might be my next step. You guys, I hope you have an awesome afternoon and evening, and I'll see you next time.